Uh, so, you know, Rops has been around for a while, even though he's 21 years old. He's kind of an, uh, he's an, he's an old man in CSGO now. Well yes. then, Maus versus Entz. We can see Entz will be on the defensive side. He has got some work to do. Hades will certainly help him out. There's a nice kill from him and down goes Bemis. Is ready representation. Spinks has been popped in head by Dexter. He's looking for more now. He's collected that USP, but he won't be able to do much. Drop the bombers right now. It's down to Robson. A one versus four. Got to be patient with these shots from the Glock. Disadvantageous in terms of range. We've got Hades carrying that USP Cayman. Looking to get some uh, fodder to consume. Rops of 13 HP now in a difficult situation. Very early on here on Nuke. Yeah, and this is it's a tough one. Will they give Rops anything here? Absolutely. Very fast reaction from Rops, but we'll get shut down in the end. That 13 health not helping him out. A bomb down, so it feels unlikely that we will see a force buy out of Mouse. So presumably, it should be a straightforward following round and a 2 0 start. If, it, if all goes according to plan for Rens. Yeah, Sphinx is a uh, rare representation for Israeli Counter Strike in the professional scene. It's awesome. I know there'll be people spamming the chat. But it's always nice to see um, representation from the smaller countries as far as CS is concerned. Oh, for sure. Rops with Estonia, of course, you could say the same. Yeah, I was about to say, and, and previously with Chris J, you know, in terms of the Dutch representation, it was very limited. Mouse has, Mouse sports, Mouse has a way of picking up these players as well. Yeah, they have a, a knack of like making significant roster changes and basically always working out for them. Oh, Slappy! He's going to go down to the forces of Mouse, able to take that control around the garage. And Lobby's been compromised immediately by Doto as well, though. Yeah. However, they are waiting. They're just holding now, holding formation on the ramp. And of course, they could try to creep towards hell. They could go down towards the ramp. And after patiently waiting, Doto. He knows his timing and will pursue. And as we can see, Mouse are heading towards that B bomb site. Diha is by the double doors for the time being. The control windows have not been broken just yet, which gives him some security. He knows he's not going to get flanked at the very least, and he can hide in plain sight. As I say, that the window has been broken now. Multiple targets. Got to be real careful to isolate these fights running out of bullets. But he ends up facing three ple people essentially. And it gets more difficult now for Ents. But a flurry of kills from them will leave Rops as the last man to fall in control. And Ents are able to stabilize. Yeah, definitely what you want to see. We had a lot of crazy uh, second rounds yesterday, actually, on the B stream. But looks like it will go according to plan here. And Ents will be on that full buy. We will have the first full buy from Mouse. And uh, looking forward to seeing what they how their approach looks on this first full buy round. Will we see kind of the default? Do they want to play a more gambly kind of pop? somewhere on the upper side or otherwise. So far, it's looking like outside control, but Dihara close with that MP9, and he's gonna immediately find multiple kills, massive damage being done. And you know, it's just a save from Mouse here, so nothing too untoward. I guess they invested a little bit more in the last round than I had expected. Desert Eagle Blaze. I think this that skin is unremarkable, to be honest. I sold mine. It's just, it was just made famous, I guess, by it, uh, the French Counter-Strike to begin with. Yeah, I mean, it, it represents an era of mm -hmm. art style in the game, but I think that era has, uh, you know, the game has evolved beyond that. A sick shot. So it's kind of dry now, in my opinion. It's like people always say, oh, When's the next Counter Strike coming out? Like, look at when, look at CS when it came out versus now. We don't live in that era anymore. We live in an era of updates and evolution. Look at the sounds. Look at the updated graphics on the maps. The evolution, even of the art on the skins and so on. Maybe we'll get an engine evolution as well. Who knows? Yeah, quite possibly. It remains to be seen, but it's certainly, it's definitely night and day the differences from now. And 2014. The sound of the AK and the sound of the ladder, the two clunkiest, most brutal sounds. I'm surprised I can hear anything right now. When I look back at those sounds, 
Yeah, if you look at frag movies right now from the early <laughs> yeah. era, it's really weird. Like, the AK sounds awful. Or some older clips from uh, many moons ago, many years ago. Yeah. Well, full buy round, first full buy round for both teams. Acor on the AWP, as is Hades. Hades looking after the outside position, and Dota able to actually open up onto Robson immediately. That's not a good start there for Mouse. Looking to gain some ground outside, and Hades is in position. Ready to go. Frozen goes down as well. And Mouse starting to struggle here now in this round. So Acor's got that deeper position, but it's, it's been given. That said, he will pick off Hades. But they need to find their way into a site. Plenty of time to do so. Still a minute left on the clock. Yeah, they can... Uh, you know, this is going to be difficult now for Ents to all be in, in a good position. Having somebody in heaven is going to be real important, though, but that is a huge kill for Bemis. Quickly moving forward now, as he knows he's got a little space to work with as he tries to identify where the remaining players are. I think the HUD's a little stuck as far as the player is concerned, so don't worry about that. Oh, the entire HUD is stuck. That's all right. So we've got a three versus one now, I do believe. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Snappy will be the last man to fall there. And... Uh, Mouse will get their first round on the board. So 3-1 is the score. T-side always difficult on Nuke, but we'll see if they can do any more with this. Yeah, what a great round there from Acor. Getting into position, taking full advantage. Again, we were kind of, we were hyping him up a little bit in the pre-show for this one. And it's good to see that he's off to a, a solid start. Looks warm and ready to go with the AWP. Who are we watching, Dan? Who's this? Oh, who's this? Who's oh, this, Dan? Right. Who is it? Uh, <laughs> 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 well, I guess this is there. We go. It's one. frozen. See, I knew it was frozen. <laughs> there we go. And Acor's behind him. I mean, we know it's Acor because he's got the AWP. Exactly. Yeah, and Acor's looking to do what he was doing in the previous round too, just opening things up with this AWP. Now we're gonna have to keep track of how many people are alive here. So it's this is five v five still. <laughs> That's a good call, Dan. <laughs> 5v5, five five. we've got three on the outside there, one on, on top of the silo. Looking for any, I mean, they're looking for any openings here, but there's nobody around. So what does this tell Mouse? Now, I'm not sure which player this is, but of course it's... Uh, Acor may think that there's an off angle Hades, so in the right. garage. A Acor may think there's an off angle in the garage, maybe for main. Yeah. Because like, what are the, what are the potential setups here? Maybe someone's peeking from heaven or behind the vent above heaven. You can see Dihar's hanging out in the vents, and Hades is chilling on the outside. There's going to be very little time left in the round at this point. I, th I, th I forgot to oh, yeah. count. I forgot to count. Maybe I should get, get the count, the How count much down time on my left? phone <laughs> or something like, for next round. Still waiting for that opening, and there's a flashbang in case someone's in that garage. Hades oh, can't win the battle against Acor. That is work to do on the A bomb site. There are stereo frags though, and uh, we've got one player here behind Default who's really got to put in some work. It's Sphinx. He gets the first kill, but the bomb carry he cannot stop. We've got a uh, Diha popping out of the vent, and he's dead now. So Mouse will find a second round on the boards. So it is three to two, I do believe. Yeah, really slow round to that one as well. Hey Dan, what's the economy looking like? <laughs> good question. <laughs> What's the buy? Well, I can tell you the buy. There's five, four AKs on deck for Maus and the AWP for Acor. Looks like it might be Eco Town for the counter terrorist side. When this, when this flipping brother, yeah, this FBI brother skin first came into the game, so many, be so many people tweeted me, "Oh, James, it's you. You guys are knobheads." Can I say that? Well, I've said it now. You guys are idiots. <coughs> I'm not that. I'm not that complexion, or anywhere close. Anywhere close to it. Sorry, I almost destroyed the uh, the desk here. Well, it's a it's a pretty good start for Mouse, you know, considering that uh, you know, sure they're down, but it's they they won their first buy rounds with the orb, and the the second rounds that you know they played it really passive and slow, and. It act that actually that approach actually worked out for them. They kind of just inched their way forward until they had enough space, like at the the correct positions, to split on the upper side, and that worked out really nicely. So, 
you know, I'm, I'm curious about Ensa's approach going forward, if they'll be a little bit more active. It's quite dangerous at the same time because mouse are just that they're hitting their shots right now. So it's, you know, you're going to have to have some setups to win some space outside, for example. Maybe we'll see that, you know, the CT smoke that goes, you know, pretty deep towards the T side, like under the silo, so that you can get some forward positions and it kind of plays against any forward smokes that might be thrown by the, the T side. And you're also able to, in doing that, you know, create problems for their, their AWPA as well. They'll have to invest more. So that could be one approach, you know, playing quite active outside for ENS. Um, but equally, we might may see them continue to play passive outside and and instead sort of play the, the rotation game around the sites, force mouse to, to execute on the sites. Someone yeah. tweeted me that they had all three mouse sport stickers, mouse stickers, excuse me, on a black P90. But it didn't send me an actual picture oh. of it, which is uh, kind of missing the point. But uh, that's cool. You have to use your imagination. <laughs> yeah. I saw someone's got a, a Reason sticker on a stock AWP, which is a massive rip. I think it was Doto, or at least he had it in his hands. But we shall see. Reason Gaming. Man, I was in that team for a while. You used to play for Reason Gaming? Yeah, for a while. What, Quake TDM? Uh, e yes. So you played for Reason, you played for I Dignitas. I kind of went backwards. I went Dignitas, Four Kings, and then Reason. So I kind of like I went to the top, to the lesser important teams. <laughs> as opposed to the Four Kings reverse. is always a cool brand. It is, yeah. Strike. I don't know if they're doing anything. It's dead now, I feel like. Aren't they? I would, uh, I would uh, imagine so. One of the historic teams, though. They used to be one of the most kind of important orgs, but... I don't even know what their logo is. I don't think I've ever seen a logo. Well, that tells you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have a logo? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What was the logo then? <laughs> so <laughs> That's the next question. I now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Toto, he's crept up on Dexter. That's a little bit scary. That's a big opportunity. He has a player next to him as well who can swing with a USP yeah. to allow him to uh, get a devastating kill later on. Or he can just dry peek himself and do it. Yeah. It's looking, looking uh, like a good recovery coming through there. Frozen with, uh, you know, those couple kills. Uh, it's just being left alone on the side. They're able to clear him out. So nothing really stopping them planting now at this point. So that's that's a huge win. Dota could cause some problems still. Though. The economy damage would be really huge. If Dota can get a couple of kills, that would, even if they lose a round, of course, that's the most likely thing. The kills would be very impactful. So that's the objective here for Dota. Get a couple of kills. The so effect on that stick is pretty cool. It looks like a an eight bit heart or a dead mouse logo. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sold. Sold on it. It's a cookie cutter. It's very thick. Yeah, so Dota will be holding on to this one. Not really being given any anything here. He hasn't got a kit. So it appears he wants to fight to the bomb. Oh great shot. It's outrageous. That's such a that is value right there. It's, it's very cheeky because he he needs the money. Well, they both. Oh well, yeah, he needs the money more than they do. So it's a cheeky frag for yeah. for three hundred dollars. But there we are. Yeah, I mean, again, like it's any economic damage you can get is great, and he took a risk, but he managed to make it work out. That's that's really impressive. Confidence. And yeah, it was a really nice shot. And we're at an interesting point now because you know it feels like you know Mouse are in the in the driving seat for sure. And so in a full buy, we even get the Org from Hades. We'll see if the approach from Mouse continues to work. You know, I was mentioning you know playing more actively outside. We've got Dihar in that position around the secret stairs. Hades takes down Robs again, and that's a four-man push around the outside. So Dihar is going to get some action here towards secret. Surely, surely, surely. For Acorn. Okay, looking for players outside. Lucky to take a headshot through the step there. I'll get away with that and back off. Pour some utility out of Maus. Rops is a goner. They're still looking for these angles. Now, this is a fiendish angle wow. from Hades and a great usage of the org scope. However, Doto's been lost in main. That is quite the angle. 
Very impressive. Great damage done initially from Dihar as well with the HE and so on. Everyone you know, taking taking a beating on the mouse side. They they really don't have options here. This is what we we're talking about before. You know, they they have the outside control, but the, the, how do you convert that into site control in a plant? That's not really looking all that li likely. Uh -oh. Dexter though with the creep and somehow Snappy com just totally blindsided there. Thirty this seconds. Yeah, this makes things really awkward because uh, we can see the position that Hades has to hold the heaven position from. At least he has some cover from main. 20 seconds, though, and this could go wrong for Miles. Where is the bomb headed? Headed down towards the B bomb side, as we can see there. So they are making a better decision. But Dihar, well, he's not hes not in a spot where he can stop the bomb from being planted. 10 seconds. We'll see if he tries to make a break for it. By the double, double doors now as Demas, he's low. He's in the red. He's dead now. Through the door, Dexter will die. That's a huge frag as the bomb's planted in the late seconds. Oh. Dexter, what are you doing? Sphinx now by Decon. One versus two. Dexter's frags in this round. My God. He's got no kit, Sphinx. There might be one on the site. Looks to press forward. Needs to try and avoid the trade fragging situation. But no one's peeking him. Can't see uh, a, a diffuse kit anywhere close either. So... Um, I'm not sure that he really wins this round, and it seems he'll have to run away. Yeah, he is out of there. What a sick round from Dexter, but what is, uh, in general, if you look at Mouse Force's position, wasn't it a three versus five or something like that? They they had, they had were in the outsides. They had outside control, but they were pretty stuck, honestly. With uh, They didn't really have options until Dexter gets the backstab. I think it was onto Snappy, I want to say, in ramp room. And that's really unfortunate because Ents had so much control. Yeah, that's wrecked their money as well. They're in trouble now. That is such an ang. Yeah, 5v3, Bemis with no HP. Effect almost a two versus five, basically. Here yeah. from Mouse. These frags <laughs> were outrageous from Dexter. Just to secure the bomb plant and had that early defense. Crazy. That was really huge. So we'll see what Ents will uh, opt for. Not going to be much. Ooh, the Mag 7's coming out. That's a cameo appearance if ever I saw one. Yep. Yep. Shoutouts to the Mag 7 hazard. I think I'm the only person who uses it. It's Black crazy. It's crazy because the origin, I feel like if you look at a Mag 7 on you, there's a certain context. You know, you know, you harken back to the swag days. Right? That's so long ago now, James. We are rich with history. Yes. One of the greatest things about uh, this storied game. Free Brax. Absolutely. He recently uh, just became focused on uh, on streaming. Yeah, right? he. It's it's quite. I mean, I've, well, maybe we can talk about that in a bit. <laughs> I guess we are in an eco situation here. He struggled to find a team that works for him, which is really sad, because it feels like we all want to see him play professionally, whatever it is. Just can't, just has the worst luck, I feel like. Yeah, well, hopefully that, w that is will be successful for him. He is uh, still missed in Counter-Strike. Yeah. I would say. Absolutely. Well, there is a chance for something dirty here. Mouse have really got to keep one eye on the clock. You have got a... Got three players in squeaky now as Bima swings forward to create some space for his teammates to peek with him. A very smart... Uh, little thing there. If he stands in the door, then that becomes way more problematic for his team. So just the fact he went through the door and moved to the side to allow his teammates to peek with him is just a little thing that uh, people at home can think about for a 2v1 situation. Make it 2v1, not 1v1. Yeah. Well, it's 5-3 to three now. Mouse in the lead, of course. But some of these rounds that they've won have actually been pretty pretty crazy. I think the last one in particular, that last gun round, it was it was a 3v5 kind of 2v5 situation that they won. So quite uh, disappointing looks so far for ends. But you know, back on the buy, Hades on the AWP. We'll see if they can have a better start to this round. They've been getting a lot of these opening kills, especially on Rops around the squeaky position. Rops is not doing the same thing here. Acor is holding the outside as per usual. And Dihar's keeping checks on secret as usual. So it's, this is a this is a similar opening as to what we've been used to so far. Did Hades win this battle? What a key fight this will be for Hades. Ooh. Well, he's got problems towards the ramp now, which will uh, open opportunities and make him lose position on the outside. 
These are hard, hard angles for Mouse to identify where Hades is playing. Very interesting what um, they're giving up and where the choke points will be for Mal's. Of course, Secret's always going to be a choke point. He's worried about three different positions. That's quite cool. But still, he gets the pick on the Frozen. Good result for Hades, but he's having to do a lot here. Yeah, well, now both are. And uh, Dihar's going to play it off of the presence shown by his teammate. That is some great spatial awareness. The bomb's been spotted and swatted now on the A bomb site. Rob's trying to catch leg, but unable to do so. And he's going to be up against three players, trying to isolate fights, but loses the first one, falls to the flames, and then find a fourth round on the board. We can see here as well, they're using in-ears, and I believe the headphones on top are playing Donda Chant from Kanye's new album, so that they can't hear anything that they want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, this was this was another this was like a great round for Mens, wasn't it? Like it, it was a bit worrying seeing how sort of Hades ha was almost in this very neurotic state where he's like, I'm worried about ramp, I'm worried about you know garage to main, I'm worried about you know garage to spawn, like I'm worried about all of these different positions. I'm going to keep moving between all of them very rapidly, but still, you know, finds a good timing to defend the outside, and it, and and that kind of just ends up not working out, being quite deflationary for Mouse. So the question is, I, you know, now would be a good opportunity for Mouse to, 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 to kind of switch up the pace, James. Like, going faster. All right, Mouse, what, we, what do we have? What do we have for this one? Oh. All right, so the four AKs and the AWP for Mouse bots. Squeaky will be blown off early. Sphinx holding an off angle. Can spray through the corner if he spots a shoulder. Again, those boxes on the ramp as well. I think I think in earlier versions of Nuke and earlier versions of uh, of Counter Strike, some players would spray towards the lobby through the corner of those boxes, so they weren't showing too much of themselves. Don't really see it in uh, this iteration of uh, Nuke and CS:GO, well Counter Strike, I should say, more broadly speaking. Well, there's the bomb spot. He's looking for a second one. He will spot two players outside, so at least he's got some intel for his team. 4v4 situation as Dota tries to make a difference, but he will be taken out from credit card. Bomb dropped again, and they know Frozen still on the outside. And they're swinging here, and this is a fast-moving round after all. Yeah, looking to put all the bodies behind this outside push. Not working out particularly well, though. Ultimately, here for Mouse, they got Rops who's holding onto that lobby control to make sure that he can keep any pushes on us. But at this point, it doesn't really matter too much. You've got the reset of positions here for Ents, making sure that they can cover everything that they need to. And they've got the bomb down, actually, as well. And at this point, they're all ready and set up. It's up to Bemis and Rops to make the move now. And it's going to be down to Rob's here. Bemis, oh, Rob's is going to get caught off. It's going to say Bemis on the, the AWP is not the best look here. It's just so exposed to so many positions. And he's been spotted as well. We'll try to hold on to this one now. Will they let him survive with the AWP? I uh, they might actually, because it looks like he's... Their money's not great. Yeah. But Snappy is hunting. I mean, they have an, an, an AWP on Hades, and he definitely doesn't want to go down late. So, looks like Bemis will survive. Yeah, don't want to put too much into that, really. Because it uh, may not w be worth it. There's still five rounds to play for in this half. So, you don't want to handicap yourself by going a little, a little too short. But uh, there's a big exchange here. An explosive mid-round on round number 10. Seen a lot more slower, methodical round. So, that was a change of pace. Now we'll see what uh, it would look like for Mouse Sports. Mouse, excuse me. Tech 9 only for Rocks. The rest will have rifles, the AWP for Acor once again. You can see that Hades is, is in a very forward position now by T Red with the AWP. Always nice to catch somebody off guard here. Only Frozen on the outside, though, and Hades has got to be careful not to get touched by this Molotov. He'll be heard by Frozen, but he can't quite see him over the flames. Eventually he will. The spray is here. Hades can't jump away from the headshot. Again, as soon as that those those flames go down, it will give that free information, and that's cost him dearly. But Doto will respond again. Not shy for lobby pushes, Doto, but will he pick the right angle? Yes, he will. Perfect timing for him. Two kills. Robs to find himself a rifle, and this one continues to get faster here. Two versus two. I love how he plays in front of the smoke there. That's just so 
so awesome. Catching Mouse completely, but a two versus two now after that one. Fast response from Bemis. And now Snappy's holding onto the ramp. Bemis again finds a headshot, opens up that ramp position. And now Doto has to do everything by himself in 1v2. And the only thing that Doto has is the element of surprise. Bomb has been planted. Need to convert off of it with a kill, hopefully, and then make another 1v1. That's how you win this, but... Oh, wow, Doto able to find Robs. Okay, now it's on. Bemis is weak. And Doto, his position is known. Oh, maintaining the high ground, actually. Bemis may not expect that. Dropping down, it's a very good open plant, and Bemis will finish it off. Nice recovery there for Mouse, but a costly round for both sides. Yeah, 2v3 when I said 2v2. Escalated into a 2v2 later on, so excuse me. Six to five for Mouse, six rounds from 11 on the T side. Pretty good for Mouse at present. It's promising for the half to come, especially if they can win this one. I mean, if they can win this one, they could uh, definitely target nine rounds because uh, Ents are heading towards the end of their current economy. So this is a round full of opportunity for Mouse, but that may be easier said than done as they'll have the five AKs in this round, no AWP for Acor. Although Rops has an AK rather than just a Tech 9, so that is an improvement for him. So gains in one place, shortcomings in another. But they've got they've got just about high utility here, as we can see. Rops just with the HE grenade, but the rest of them, if they've got the smokes, they've got the incendiaries. They, if they wanted to make a play in towards the A bomb site, which we haven't seen much of uh, early on, they could do that. But it doesn't seem that will be the case as the grenades are lined up once again for the outside. Yeah, a lot of focus around this outside control for Mouse. I mean, it's in, it's really worked out for them a lot of the time. Like, they're able to create a lot of uh, plays from this. We get the cross smokes. And a passive approach overall here from Enz. Hades looking after the outside with a in, from that spawn position. And once again, d with the secret play. Just get that bit of information before falling back. We're at the one minute mark. d didn't see anything really. Frozen's been left as the lurk outside in a passive position. But with that info from d surely Ents are expecting an inside or upper play. Looking for some aggression at present. Now, the trajectory of that smoke will reveal some information to Mouse, but nothing too crazy. And we can see Doto will look to play closer to that smoke. He can block plays if they try and make a play through it. And indeed, they do appear to be very expectant, but what will they do once the smoke disappears? They're just gonna try peak with two men. Exactly, that's exactly what they're gonna do. And the bomb's lost now in that squeaky position. Dexter moving forward, but there was a second man here the entire time. Rob's almost dead as well. Nine HP for him. This was a great opportunity for Mouse, not looking so at the moment in a two versus four. Yeah. yeah, Ross is going to fall back and not too much to be done. Frozen's been glued to this position outside as well the entire time, just not really not really having an opportunity. Needed his teammates to play off of and Ents will happily lock it in. Yeah, one player needs to reconnect to the server, it looks like. But uh, that is exactly the round that Ents needed. Again, they were starting to, to be in trouble there, so to stabilize in such a fashion will be very favorable for them and definitely instill some con Dihar, but that's about it most of the time. Hades plays that spawn position quite commonly or in the uh, like in the hell position. Blockers. Half by time. Had a couple hero rifles. What can they do with them? Yeah, how good is the timing on that incendiary? Well, Hades is here to help a little bit at least, but ramp has been taken, and Miles won't be shy to hold this position for a while and make Ents a little nervous. They have Snappy downstairs already, Ents, which will help. Hasn't been uh, shot this time. Double peek attempted. Pistol first, rifle second, but don't really get that connection they were looking for. Hades just shy of 70 HP. And uh, that means that... The hell position is still in control events, as far as mouths are concerned, at least. 
Snappy now at the point of uh, no return, looking to make a difference, picking every few seconds. There's a clue. Surely his time is limited. They have to check this position, and he's still on an island alone, is Snappy. Surely he's got to check this. Okay, there's Acor to check it. Gets a 1v1 in the second one, and he has really thinned out these numbers now. Four versus two. Two rifles for Mouse, though, but they need to plant the bomb as well. I don't see a smoke for them to do it. So they've got to commit to this quickly because the ramp is about to be compromised by not one, two, but three players, which means they'll be very shy on angles, and they'll be shy on plays as well as those final kills come through. Ents in the lead now, seven to six. Yeah, looking really good. Looking really good. Getting more confident as time goes on. And, you know, you're talking about sort of going even on this first half. But, again, looking like they're pretty good to avoid that. Uh, you know, again, if things go according to plan here, they'll be on the 8-6. They'll be up against a pretty poor uh, situation for Mouse. Can't invest in this round. So, mostly these pistols to work with. And, yeah, it feels like ends are stabilizing nicely at this point. It doesn't feel like Mouse has, be, has been giving many different looks to their T-side approach so far. I don't know that we've seen a single upper like set push. Like just no, like really I don't feel like we've seen one, no. Piece, yeah. I think in many, in many matches, they're somewhat inevitable. But despite that, again, they have a good score. They, they have way more rounds than, than Ents, I think, will find comfortable. Yep which is promising for the second half. And it's just been it's just been very slow mid-rounds for the most part. Just trying to feel each other out, identify what Ents are trying to po achieve positionally-wise outside, especially. Acor's been able to just stand on T-Red and figure, try and figure stuff out. Hasn't always been successful, but as far as the rounds are concerned, you might argue that they have. Hades must have seen a shadow there. Repositioning now, having a quick flick, but uh, Rose has got five HP and Hades is Ooh. dead. So that is unfortunate. That's a frustrating exchange <laughs> as far as Ents are concerned. But with Mouse on pistols, that is promising for them as well. It's a good start, but it's, of course, about how you finish. And they can have some impact for this final round and a half if they can do some more damage there, because we can see that there isn't all the money in the world in the uh, coffers for Ents. So, I mean, maybe two kills would be enough. I'm not a mathematician. But, then, you know, three would be an overperformance considering what they have taken into this round. Yeah, d -Hall. just looking after the AWP for the time being. And, yeah, it's looking quite good here for Ents at the moment. There it is. <laughs> waiting for those, you know, just those Deagle shots. Just waiting for an opportunity... And not another one for Bemus. Frozen's found a pretty deep spot, but has to break the glass. Well, it doesn't have to, but Snappy should surely be able to deal with the rest of these ramp players. And with that, that should be the round. He's got Dihar there for support as well. So that's the bomb down, and it's just Frozen left for 5 HP. So looking like they have... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're looking like that could uh, spread and kill him. That would be so good. I need it to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm sad. Yeah, that would have been great. It would do minimal harm. Oh, they're, they're going to force him to survive with no money. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> that sucks if you're frozen. Oh, that sucks so much. He's only got $2,000. Oh, that was close as well. That is uh, a sprayable wall. Oh, he, he needed to die in the Molotov, James. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Oh, yeah. We've, we've, seen, we've seen games before and say in Inferno where an echoing team choose to all stand in a Molotov and die to give a smaller kill bonus to the opponent. Yeah. Um, so that is, he will rue that mistake. Or will he? He has a Desert Eagle. You never know. I feel like if you could get a kill with a Molotov, I feel like you should be getting more more money because I feel like it's so rare. Or should be, it's, well, it's not super rare, but it's, it's uh, I don't know. Maybe they want to reward more direct impact. Yeah. Either way, uh, we're, we're into the final round and Frozen not having any money really does suck. We'll see if he can make good of it. Doto is ready to go and they're going to go straight past Doto and he is loving it. Able to take down both players out of that squeaky position. Very little left now for Mouse at the end of the first half. Rops against four players and he's going to be able to take down Doto, but Bomb is down. They know where it is. It's going to get smoked off. Rops is in a hell of a position.
Yeah, he's got some waiting to do in this last round of the first half. He will refresh his last known location, which allows Ents to take any position they want, but they will be focused on this bomb site, I'm sure, as the bomb is in squeaky, and that is a uh, very well-placed Molotov, but Rops is a little further away, smartly. And now we will see his smarts. I, I'm just going to enjoy his approach to the situation. He's identified that someone is likely above him. Now, he doesn't know if anybody's behind default or above. He may almost see a leg here. He'll need timing to be in his favor as well. Speaking of timing, 20 seconds on the clock and it won't work out for him. Nine rounds for Ents in the end with um, how many rounds Mao's got earlier on. I think at this point they've got to be you know, happy with pulling out these rounds. I feel worried for Mouse now. You feel worried for Mouse? Yeah. I feel worried for Ents. I mean, I predicted Ents, but I feel, I mean, why do you feel worried for Ents? They, they got 9-6, they're all right. Uh, I don't know, man. If if I was on the CT side and the T's got six rounds, I'm 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 not happy. FF. On uh, Nuke. But let's see how it works out. Pistol will be very important as well. Rops very patient with the USP. Rops and Dexter combined for four. And uh, that's going to be a fantastic start. We may be looking at a 9-9 scoreline. We'll see if Ents choose to force. They get next to nothing out of this one. A kill onto Dexter. We may see some... I think we've seen some cheap helmets for Mal's as well. Again, if, you're, if you buy Kevlar in the pistol round and it's untouched, then you can buy a helmet in the next round for $350, which brings you a lot closer to buying a rifle instead of an SMG you have to upgrade later. Um, so, of course, even if you get shot in the head and you've got like one HP, as long as your Kevlar wasn't touched, you can yeah. get that helmet. And we can see there are three M4s in the squad. So um, only getting one kill in that round ends and just getting popped immediately will have, you know, it'll compound the problems for them as we see these rifles come out for Mouse. Yeah, but there's no util. In, so this this could get a bit sketchy. Robs has to deliver and he gets two kills, which I think is really, that's... Best case scenario, you couldn't have expected really all that more from Rops. Oh! Nice shot from Doto. And they go one for one, but it's a 2v3. Lots of damage done here by Ents. If they get a bomb down, which it looks like they should be able to, they are definitely buying in the next round regardless of what happens. But Frozen will take down Snappy. Hades, can Hades get some extra kills here? It will be massive going forward to set the team up for success. But Acor's going to swing. It's going to be a hit. And the round will be won by Mouse. Yeah, need to delay the defuse a little just so Dexter can pick up the M4 on the ramp and get rid of his FAMAS so they can make the end of the round as efficient as possible. There we go, there's the upgrade. So the three M4s will be in the safe hands for Ents and that's going to be a big priority with those uh, two other kills. So only the two FAMASs are lost in the end, which makes it a lot better for them. The question is, do we get a half buy so that there's still a full buy in the following round? Uh, for Ents, I would prefer to see that than a fo another force buy because if you force buy again, you get into dangerous territory where you can do it, but it's kind of gambly because you kind of need to win he the round. Insta fragged, insta traded. We didn't even see him fire his gun. He got a kill and died. So that's like who who's fastest to the server, you know? <clears throat> At least it's not an online LAN. Uh, yeah. Because who knows who would have got that kill then? I Maybe know. no one. <laughs> no one wins. Maybe they would have lagged out. And is it going to be a half buy or a force buy? Looking like... I see the deagles. Yeah, looking like a, a pretty light buy. That's g Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. I really didn't want to see the, the force buy, the gamble, like the full gamble and force again. Only if they'd gotten more kills in that previous round would it make sense. But opening up, you know, Dota is going to get another headshot. He's been Dota has been pretty good with the, these deagle kills. And if they can get another couple uh, frags out of this round, I think Ents will be very happy with themselves. Yeah, Acor and Frozen have got some cash, but you don't want to have to spend it all in the next round to get those M4s out for your teammate. M4s out, yes. So Ents will be chilling for a while now. I think it looks like they want to just go down the vent, actually. Yeah. Obviously, Bemis is looking after this spot, but that could be a passage to getting a surprise bomb down. They're falling back. The, the re-smoke, it looks like that's really convinced them 
to go away from that initial squeaky play. Yeah, Bemis has an incendiary as well, although I don't know how safely he can throw it as the smoke is depleting to try and delay a little longer. We shall see what he chooses to do. 35 seconds on the clock as Maus look for something. Not getting what they're looking for really though. Bullets to the face and chest. And the score now is tied. Game on. Yeah, solid stuff from Bemis there around Squeaky. And indeed, game on as we will see five AKs collected. They had enough money to get an AWP if they had wanted to do so, but we'll see five AKs. And I, I love that. You know, we're going to see hopefully quite a mobile round from Ents. And, you know, Acor, you know, is definitely someone they've got to watch out for. On the AWP, he's a menace. Looking for the angle through to Squeaky. Doesn't see a single thing. If the smoke's outside as well. Not actually very... Okay, well, Frozen has full vision here. And he's just going to get a free one with that with a one way. I do like watching Frozen on CT Nuke. Doto leading the server with 18 kills at present. But now he moves to the T side. He may find things more difficult and perhaps he'll be overtaken by Frozen a little later on. Although he's first got to catch up with Rops and Bemis. One and two frags ahead of him respectively. So Entz will offer a wall of smoke outside but Acor will have the information because he is beyond it. Scoped in and ready for the ting. Oh, the flicks. Doesn't quite get all of it. 43 HP for Doto. But now Ents know that Maus know they are inside and not out. So that's going to make things harder for them. Three man on road towards the ramp. Rops will fall off with that first kill. He's got support here from Acorn now, who's made quite the road. I was frozen, actually. Excuse me. With that second kill to drop the bomb. And Maus take the lead and move to double figures. Are you still feeling confident about Ents now? Uh, <laughs> yeah, not after that, that round. But we'll see what they can do on the next buy round. You know, maybe they'll switch things up a little bit. But yes, it definitely felt like Mouse did a great job at controlling things. I love the aggression from Acor outside because Ents were having to come back outside after Frozen had locked it down. And Acor just created a spot where they had to use so much more utility. A fast round into the A bomb site. We didn't see much of this from Mouse, but we will with from Ents with the pistol to tech nines. Some moving accuracy, some spam, but it's their inboxes being filled by the likes of Ents now. But Snappy's made it a 1v1. Acor behind the smoke. He knows exactly where Acor is, and he's collected an M4. He has four HP as well. That Molly, he can't go anywhere near that. Another smoke is up, and he's got a chance to plant the bomb. He'll plant it safely round the back, and that Molly actually will stop Acor from pushing because he would be heard by it. Snappy now with angles, and this is awkward for all. Four HP with a rifle versus Acor and a pistol. Snappy focusing on the left, Acor on the right, but Snappy has a superior angle if he's fast enough. If he's snappy enough, you might say. And he has outmaneuvered Acor in a fast round, a fast execute from Ents into the A bomb site yields an unlikely round. That's kind of, that's just crazy. That is kind of just. <laughs> I mean, suddenly it's a one v one. Just it didn't seem like that was going to be happening with how that that opening actually went. But hey. It's, uh, it is what it is, and Ents are going to find themselves with an opportunity here. And being able to pick up the AWP as well, definitely quite nice, because their money's been pretty stretched. CQC, close quarters combat with these pistols. Staffy spotted Acor there. Doesn't want anything to do with that. Good to see that Acor's flicks are still on point here. Again, he did tag Doto through the box, but he did land the shot. So coming in sharp as he was yesterday. And uh, again, we've got more smoke grenades thrown on the outside. But that's a very forward Molotov, which once again will compromise their ability to push forward. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because Mouse are investing a lot in the outside control. And you can see Ents here of thinking, well, we don't have the ability to challenge this. We're just going to wait it out instead. Where is Frozen? Is he flanking? Oh, boy. They're expectant now. Yeah, they're just in these deep outside positions still. Well, here's the execute into the A-bomb site. Takes the force forward. He will stand in the flames and fall to them. 
but he'll get a kill for it. And I think he spots at least one, maybe two players on the kill feed in that squeaky position. More info as Sphinx looks to clear the site. There's been a push in hut for safety, you might say, by Bemis in the meantime. And Hades is just holding that rotation from the ramp position, but also an angle on a hut push as well. No bomb plant just yet as Acor still on the high ground. And Bemis hiding in plain sight, you might argue. How long does Hades stand here for? Sphinx trying to hold multiple angles as that bomb is planted. Snappy on 5 HP and a 3 on 3. Bemis has to pick the right time to strike. Only two players on that bomb site now on an island, but they'll still deliver a kill onto Bemis. That one looks good, but Acor won't make a connection. Now, are they headed to a save? As it is going to be uh, very awkward to get into this bomb site. Two AWPs in the hands of Maus. And I think this round is over. Yeah, it's definitely looking like that. Wanting to save those. What an interesting scenario because you had both teams kind of knowing what had to happen in that mid round. Mouse invested a lot outside. Acor was supporting Frozen on the push, got Frozen into a deep position that then allowed Acor to fall back to towards main to help defending an upper push. And they had full control around ramp. They knew that that the only place Ents could really go in the mid round would be an upper push, that upper set piece that we saw. They were kind of pushed into that into that play. And I think both Mouse and Ents knew what was going on, but Ents executed it really confidently. So it's definitely a good look. And I mean, double AWP, Ents will know that they have two orbs moving forward. What do they think is the best way to counter a double orb setup? Well, another upper set piece would be really good against, against that. Oh, that was close. Mm. D-Heart <laughs> small opportunity. Very spicy stuff outside. A little uh, more pronounced in this second half. A little faster. A little more violent. As Ents creep towards the ramp where we've got nobody on the ramp, actually. And how yeah. about this for some timing from Ents? Maybe, uh, I guess they're just, they're just hardwired for this. They make a perfect play with the presence outside from Mao's they cannot expect with this timing oh my God. three players, four players to be essentially in the B bomb site. Hades may just post up and wait for that reposition as Miles will assume they've got some time to play with, but in fact, oh my God, they don't. I can't, they, until the glass broke, I don't think there was any sound cues on the lower site. And now the bomb is down. The pop up as well, oh, Hades. That is sick. The man knows his angles. That is so awesome. I don't know. Do they just save? The round's done. The round is I, done. Dan. Yeah, I think they have to just save. They they don't have position for anything. This yeah, they just they're just. Do you know what this reminds me of? This is going to be a throwback and a half. But back when I buy power, <laughs> wow, hit me out. Okay, you know <laughs> what? <laughs> Last week it was uh, I think seven years since they were playing in Milan. Oh, well, okay. Well, that that's what I'm referring to. They played. They played, uh, I don't know if it was the finals, I can't remember who they were playing now, but there was this matchup where Ivo Power were playing on the CT side of, of Nuke, and their, in, their comms were so bad, and they had openings around the map, and people were not comming things. So this situation happened multiple times, where the team they were playing against would just walk down to the lower site, and they wouldn't realize. until it, and, and when they would realize, the round would be already over, because they'd lost too much position without being able to adjust. And so that was completely reminding me of that. and. That's crazy. That is that's insane. You know, Mouse. It's uh, it's it's very surprising not having any eyes at all there on that ramp position, and complete gift. And that's going to get them to twelve rounds now. In two different countries, I think I was awake for almost three days at one point. Yeah, we, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good times, man. But th that's your that's the stripes. That makes everything else easy as hell. Yes. Well, this is a big round for both squads. Ents moving quickly into the vents. Down they go, looking for the coal downstairs, perhaps. Trying to find something to enrich the coffers. And they'll be plasma the bomb on that call and trying to destabilize the rods. We'll see if Mouths can stop them. Two rounds behind now. I expected a, uh, a strong CT half from them, but they're up against a strong opponent. And Hades will find three on the outside and shut it down once again. Oh, wow. That's a huge, huge defense from Hades. And once again, two AWPs in the hands of Robson Acor. And what can you do with them? At this point, having the AWPs is really almost 
harmful because then saw finding really good ways to some circumvent them we talked about you know what is a good way to counter a team that has a double op setup well if you can get onto a bomb plant using your utility and the ops can't fire to stop you getting the bomb down then all they were able to do is retake retaking with ops or nuke not easy and that's exactly the position mouse have been in the last couple rounds having to try to like just be in a spot where they've got a retake with the ops it's not what you want Wow. Yeah, this is just, great. Just shutting down any rotation towards Secret. Man like Hades will deny. And uh, now now things are getting a little difficult for Maus. They, they find themselves in deep waters. But they have managed to eke out another buy. But Ents now are three rounds away from victory. Yep. I did consider them for a 3-0 Ents. But I made a mistake. Yes, definitely. It's they're they're certainly uh, quite the dark horse. Yeah, and might get a different look here. Dihar looking for that hot control. We've got Dota, you know, tossing in the incendiary. So they're going to go for the upper set piece here. Dexter opening things up with a good defensive kill. The trade is through from Sphinx, and it looks like it's quite difficult to get into this upper site though. So they can reset. Ents can reset off the four v four and be in a more favorable position. Uh, however, interestingly, both sides have burnt all utility, so that's that's the last smoke. I like the presence of mind to be like, all right, I don't fancy this committing to the rest of this push. Let's just stop it. Limit the variance. Slow things down. We have time. We have a three-round lead. We don't need to gamble too much and, and allow them to get back into the game. One issue, though, James, is that they're against two ops. So that's this is this is where the two ops can benefit Mouse because they don't have the util to flash the orbs off. Cheeky boost towards the ramp. The scope, I'm sure, has been heard as Rops looks to fall off. Now you wonder who will have the superior angle. Hades, that's the wrong time to do a 180. My God, he gave him his back like it's jujitsu. Got choked out immediately. Bemis now has to hold down the A bomb site. He's got help from Frozen as well. The crossfire is working out very nicely indeed. They need to survive with three players though. Sphinx tries to make a break for it, but Rops again from ramp to heaven, denies Ents and closes the gap to two. Side. So 13 to 11 is the scoreline now. And in terms of the money, still lots of money on Ents. So quite comfortable there. Mouse need to string rounds together to prevent themselves from losing this matchup. And that's not a good start. Acor goes down straight away to that Molotov around main. That's a huge problem. Yeah, being in that position can be quite dangerous. I'm not sure if there was a combination. Uh, HG grenades. Back in the day versus pro. Classic versus pro squad. The Poles, the Polskis would have double HEs. Apex used to be a victim to them sometimes. Double HEs towards main as you're trying to make an aggressive play. Anyway, we are into a 4v4 now as uh, Frozen throws some flashes high from that credit card position. Dexter creeping with the AWP now. He has to make a difference and try and keep this bomb on the floor. Bemis lost in the meantime though. Going deep now as it may be a double peek. Able to escape the initial um, aggression from Sphinx, but he will get the kill eventually. We can see Rops is creeping around. They think he has an idea that one is behind default, trying to get a labor frag. The 180 from Rops, but he can't spin back. Spin to win, not this time though. Sphinx is here to put Ents on 14 rounds. Massive round to win. We talked about the implications on the money, and Mouse are in a spot where they can't fully buy here. I mean, Rops and Dexter, their money's pretty low. There would be enough for an AWP if they want for a core, but they're going to be making some concessions for sure. So this is this is it. Mouse have to win this round, I think, to be in a position to to save themselves here. Rops almost did it there. The fact that he had to kind of go to that first kill like three times with a control burst. If that if that comes a bit more quickly, he probably wins that. One. That's that's one v three. And these games are so hard to predict. Yes. It's day two of the major, and I'm thinking, like, how how on earth does anyone get diamond coin? I do think it's going to be harder than Berlin, for sure. As one of the few... C CSGO told me that I'm the only person with a diamond coin. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but they no, did, they did tell me that. No, it can't be true. There's no way. They did tell me that. They, well, they say a lot of things, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Three rounds behind for Mouse Sports, and uh, yeah... I mean, the double ops showed promise. We saw some strokes of genius from Rops with the uh, superior angles on the ramp, but that seems like it was many moons ago now. 
He finds himself with a silenced M4. Dexter with a 5-7 only. It can still work for him. You can see he's in that one-shot region. If he finds a dome, that's it. Ents now. And is st still in a stronger position, in fact. Not too concerned with the number of rounds that Mao's accrued in the first half. Frozen investigating. Doing his Praro impression. Seeing if he can find any clues here as to what's going on. But once again, Ents have completely silently walked all the way down secret here. There will be, looks like Rops will be in position to spot this. Oh no, he's actually on site, so information is coming late but they're going to have players in position a call will whiff the shot this is not the time this is what i'm talking about this is the old the old thing when the pressure is real you need to deliver when you've only got four rifles on five players and rops is whiffing as well down goes frozen I don't think they can really afford to lose anymore. As I say that, Bemis has dropped as well, and Acor may be lost as well. Another whiff, and uh, man, everybody missed everything. It feels like in that round, and Enza storming to match points. That is a brutal, deflating, dejecting round for Maus, and they won't have much to fight with in what could be the final round. Yes. Yeah, not a lot left. It's going to be difficult, but we'll see if they can find a way. Ents have looked pretty stable. I'm liking how they're able to kind of just, you know, fit, just play that game and be pretty relaxed within that. They're looking quite comfortable here. It's crazy that they were able to like walk down so deep without being spotted. Positions were there for Mouse, but here's Rops behind the smoke. There's one with the Famas. Oh, great actual tagging through the smoke there to put the pressure on Rops to prevent him getting any more. 4v4 and the ramp control is with Ents. They're looking to close this one down. For the uninitiated, outside of a silenced weapon, every third bullet will fire a tracer shot. So through smokes, you can identify where people are, especially if they're close to that smoke. It'll be pretty accurate. Two primary weapons. Make it one now as the FAMAS is lost and two pistols for Maus and it becomes less and less retrievable. No kits on the remaining players either. We just heard the bomb planted. So this one is looking a little rough now. I think the end is here. 